Hello and welcome to another Inside the Mind video. We're going to watch some game tape of some key hands that I had in a 5NL 2 table session cash game right here. So we're going to go ahead and simply get started. I'll be playing the video, pausing it uh, midway and discussing uh, my, you know, my thoughts as I made these various plays. So King Queen suited, a lot of people would just call right there on the button. But look, I've barely been at the table for two hands, don't know anything about the player. He makes it four big blinds. To me, this is an easy fold. I would rather have a little greater understanding of my opponent before I just call four big blinds. And we got a big stack here and another big stack. I don't know who's capable of three betting either. I don't know what kind of dynamics maybe had happened before I started playing on this table to make him raise such a big amount. So, Actions on me, queen 10 offsuit. I was considering just folding, but we got a limper right here. It's not the prettiest hand in the world, but I love isolating limpers with anything playable. And he just folds, take that one down, like that result, of course. Very next hand, a six offsuit after I just stole the prior hand and ace is over here, of course. So the a six offsuit, uh, standard ace in the small blind, open raise to three. He folds over there, but over here, pocket aces, love in this spot, best possible hand, right? Got a three bet to nine bigs. Always hoping they come back over the top or call, give you a value right there. Don't know much about him. He's capable of folding to C-bets. As you can see, it's 100% right there. But still, I've got a bet for value. I've got a strong hand. I'm hoping he has a king, maybe a couple of clubs for some kind of a draw, right? I got to bet again for value, right? Get value while the getting's good. It's one of my main mottos. He shoves right there and awesome. He had the king and I busted him with my pocket aces and only the 22nd hand at the table. Now we've got ace king here suited. So anytime I see ace king, um, right away, I realize this is a key hand worthy of playing for a call or a three bet, depending on what I'm presented with, or if there's limpers, ISO raising as well, right? But one thing that I'm doing is, um, you can see my cursor is on the table. Whenever I'm considering decisions, you see my cursor moving around. That's me like, my cursor kind of follows where my uh, where my eyes are going. So those are the things I'm thinking about. You can see I'm thinking about stack sizes right there, right? Um, Ace, King, they just called my ISO raise. Turning the flush draw, of course, at this point. So turning the flush draw, I am going to bet. He didn't bet when he had position on the 10 high flop on the prior street. I checked to him, perfect spot for him to be taking it down, right? The turn comes another diamond, giving me the flush draw, a great opportunity for a delayed C bet. He showed weakness by not betting, so hopefully he folds, but if he doesn't, I have backup with the flush draw and the two over cards, the ace and the king too. And you can see right now, I am doing, um, you know, opening up a HUD to, to color code an opponent. And I noticed that he's a fish, so I give him the green. Ace 10 offsuit on table two over here. You can see at this point, um, I'm just looking at a prior hand history to see what an opponent had in a prior hand, or maybe myself in the prior hand. I'm not sure what that was. So I've got the Ace 10 offsuit just waiting on the small blind. I'm figuring he'll open raise. There's a good chance. Look at my stats right there. I'm an 11 slash eight. I just looked at his stats. I have an ace 10. It's time definitely to be three bet bluff in this player. I have the best position. It's a connected ace. I would prefer a suited connected ace, but a connected ace is good enough to, to three bet bluff this player. Four, three, eight, hard to hit board, right? You've got a C bet here. What would I do if I had pocket aces, kings, queens, jacks, tens? I would be C betting for value. So I'm making it what should look like a value bet, 50 into 86 cents. And, you know, the goal is to get him to fold. Shucks, he called. Well, the six doesn't necessarily help him. It does potentially complete some draws, maybe give him a two-pair hand, like eight-six or seven-six that had a gut shot, gave him a pair. But often these kinds of players, the loose aggressive ones, they're going to stick around quite often on the flop. It's going to require a double barrel to get them off their hand. But this is one of the great things about like when you double barrel with a couple over cards, um, they're often going to check to you when you hit that top pair on the river, when you get lucky enough to, to get one of your six outs against them, right? A great spot to just check behind right there. He could have been slow playing a really big hand, hoping for me to check raise on that river. Now right here, open raise with the 6-7 suited. 
And so the interesting thing, if we think about that prior hand right there, if I need to, I'll pause the action um, to discuss that one. Actually, I will pause the action so we can come back to this hand. But in that prior hand, if you remember the action preflop, he open raised with king eight in the small blind. I three bet to nine big blinds and he called. So he does look like a very loose aggressive player at 4431. I know it's kind of hard to read on the screen maybe. 4431 with a three bet at 25%. But I color code him green because that is a super fishy play. Open raising, then calling a three bet out of position with a suited unconnected king, a weak kicker king. What a fishy play. And I'm gonna target him for value. I am going to realize that he's capable of aggression. Like I said, he's a 44-31, raising first in 44%. He's three bad already. But in general, he's a fishy player. So when I hit a strong hand, I'm going to go for max value. So in a future hand, how I rivered that top pair um, with the ace-10 on the prior hand. In a future hand, if that happens again and I river a top pair hand after he's called flop and turn, I'm definitely going to be betting. I'm not going to check behind because I know more about him now. So on this board, open raise, button calls, flopping the open ender. What do you think I should do? I think I should bet. I should see bet here. 20 cents, a little bit over half pot, looking like I'm going for value. Color code that player green. You could see a short stack. Um, I don't know much about him, only one hand, but the fact that he short stack like that, I just think he's a fish. Now I'm betting once again. He could have easily called with, uh, with a couple of over cards on the second barrel on the eight. Pairing the top card, he can easily find a fold here with anything that didn't like the flop really, but stuck around because of his position. Super fish right there, basically just min raising. He folds to see bets 100%. So the plan is to steal against him. If he calls, I'm gonna see bet bluff 100% of flops. Ah, uh -huh, and he comes out firing for a uh, uh, three-quarter pot right here. Usually a flop on his player. I do have the flush draw, but look at that. Where, where's my cursor going? I'm looking at that tiny $1.56 stack. Um, if I call right there, I'm on a draw. Let me pause this. If I call right there, I'm doing it on a draw, and there's really not enough implied odds. He doesn't have a big enough stack behind to make it worth it for me to try to draw out for a weak flush draw, right? It's one over card. 10 high flush draw, that's not, and, and he only has $1.56 behind at the time, it wasn't worth it. It was only 10x the bet size that I had to make. In the moment, I was getting incorrect odds to draw to a flush, but the implied odds just didn't make it juicy enough, right? If he might have had, like, I have 672, if he had $6 or even an equal stack, a bigger stack to play for, maybe I could have called, but just not enough to risk it right there. Plus, look at that. He's a fishy player. 43-14. Calling station. Loves to see flops. Um, and he's so far folded 100% of flops. But he comes out donk betting for three-quarter pot. Most fish, when they're just donk bluffing or making a donk blocking bet, like if he had his own flush draw, they're often going just one big blind into that pot, not making it three. So I believe that he had a good hand. That was an easy fold on my part. Pocket aces. I'm a 9-9 player, as you can see. So I'm always looking around at the smart HUD on, on the table, looking at my opponent's stats, but also checking out my own stats because if they are paying attention at all, they're going to see that I've been a very tight player. Um, and 9-9 coming in for an open raise, they could easily put me on a very strong hand right here. So i got to kind of be aware of that. Ace-queen open raised on table two. Pocket aces, you see I'm looking at their fold to see bet stats, just doing my best to try to gauge what should I do right now. What's the best way to get max value out of my hand? Open raise with the ace three offsuit. Now, one third pot he's betting right here. Um, I do have the nut flush blocker, but there's plenty of top pairs in his uh, range. There's plenty of flush draws. There's straight draws, king 10, um, ace 10 for a gut shot. 10-9 has an open ender. So much stuff right there. He's a very loose aggressive player. I am going for max value. I think he can call with a very weak wide range. Any queen will call. Even a jack might call right here. Any two hearts, any two diamonds. I've got the nut blocker for both, but I'm coming out $1.75 over betting pot. Just hoping he has a top pair that can give me value. 
And if I'm betting so big right here with the with the pocket aces, if he shoved on me, there's no way I'm folding. He could do that with two pair like he had right there, right? So um, my over bet ended up giving him value, but I really think he could have called with a weaker, just a top pair hand weaker than my aces. Maybe a couple of hearts, maybe eight, nine of hearts for the gut shot plus the flush draw, you know. Taking a look at some limping stats right here. Very fishy player decides to raise first in. Now, this is interesting. Ace 10 suited on table two. Um, facing a min three bet. Not min, but pretty close to a minimum three bet squeeze. He only made it 20 more cents when it was 15 to go. But look at that. Look at the size of his stack. 57 cents behind, 35 cents out there. I put enough to just put them all in. I re-raise him, re-pop it to get him in. Because this guy's a super fish. He could be raising with a really wide. That could be pocket eights right there. And I flop a nut flush. That's lovely. Way to take down a stronger hand. But I read him for just so much weakness. When players make those tiny three bets, sure, it could be pocket aces, kings, and queens. But could also it could also be pocket jacks and pocket tens, pocket fours. I've seen players, fishy players, make plays like that as well. So I don't fault that re-raise. Get him all in. Yeah, that ace 10 folded pre flop. Pocket deuces, great set mining hand in the best position to set mine. Hopefully, I can end the action with a call. But we'll see what happens. And I'm sitting out because this is the end of the video, right? So he open raised 57 19. You can see I already have him color coded green. Makes it three big blinds. Great set mining opportunity right here. And he calls, sweetening the pot for me. Lovely. I see no reason to fold, no reason to three bet. Calling is the play to make. And shucks, I don't flop anything. Kind of a wet board, too. So I'm thinking at this point, uh, the play is just to check fold, right? Or I guess he makes that bet. He's an honest flop player. But let's see what, if this hand gets a showdown, let's see what happens here. He made a half pot bet. And he looks like a fishy player, 38 slash 0. And he folds to C bets on the flop, 67%. So for him to come out half pot on that board, he's got a king. He has to have a king. And, of course, he got me to fold. I would have turned my set. But I think I made the right play on the flop. Oh, now he's betting small. So maybe he just has a couple of spades. You saw my, my cursor right there going around the two spades on the board. And the three hits. He's going to be bummed out. If he has a spade, he's just going to make it 30, 40 cents, right? As a busted flush draw, just a last desperate attempt at a bluff on the river. Oh, 49 cents, a little bit bigger, one-third pot. But I still put him on a couple of busted spades right here. 10 jack. Oh, queen to... Oh, so a busted open ender right there. Yep, yep. He's limping in. He's got the short stack. I'm coming for an ISO raise to four big blinds right now. Oh, five, it looks like. Last time we saw him get active with an open ender on the flop. And he followed it up. It's pretty. It's a pretty good tell, right? He followed up with a tiny turn bet, signifying that he is weak when he bets small, like two streets in a row of small bets. Pocket six is now. Yeah, sometimes players take their sweet time making decisions. So I'm looking at his stats right here. He folds the C-bets plenty on the flop. 50% in position, but still folds, flops, and turns. So I'm planning on C-bet bluffing here. The six hits. But so here's the thing. I could make a C-bet. I, I, I could just check because he turn, he seems pretty honest, right? But then again, I just made it half pot. I'm going for value, trying to build that pot, hoping he has a king. Now that he gave me value, I'm upping my bet size. I'm going bigger than half pot, making it bigger because if he wasn't scared on the king high board, he's probably not going to be scared on the eight on the turn. Hopefully he calls once again and maybe he has king 10 right here, king jack. Maybe he can raise me. I don't know. River the full house. He wasn't scared on the eight. I really don't think he's scared on the four, 
Plus, he called on two streets that in the past he's folded on. I really think he likes his hand. It's got to be a top pair at this point. I'm betting big. You can see I was considering 125, but I go to 98 because I don't want him to fold now. Maybe he had and he folded. What a shame. Um, so we'll never know what he had, but he might have had just some kind of a weak draw, maybe a weak king and finally decided this guy has him beat. Maybe it was like a king nine or something, and he could maybe find a fold. But most likely, he would have called with the top pair. My guess is he had an under pair, pocket tens or something like that. Yep. All right. Thank you so much for watching this Inside the Mind video. Now go out there and play your own session and do what I do, right? What I'm doing right now, try to speak through all of your decisions, speak the logic through all your decisions, just as if I was watching you over your uh, over your shoulder. And uh, 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 give me the reasons why you are playing the hands the way that you're playing. All righty. Good luck to you. And I'll see you in the next one.